don't go out or, or today work, it isn't because you don't want to have fun. It's because you want to better yourself so you can have fun when you're 30 yeah, and, yeah. And, and you've achieved most of what you want to achieve at a young age. Hey guys, very brief intro to this video. This is my chat with Moha. Now, Moha is one of my mentees and 10K Club members. Uh, and he was able to go from zero with his agency to 12K per month, still at the age of 17. Today is actually his birthday, so he's turning 18. So he was able to do all this stuff while still in school. He actually lives in Madrid, so I'm changing up the, the setup and I'm actually having him over uh, to record this really juicy chat. So I'm very excited for this. I think you're going to take a lot of nuggets away from it. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Guys, welcome to a, a bit of a different format for the student interviews. Today, I'm interviewing Moha. And uh, as you can see, he's going to be sitting right here. So it's going to be like a, a bit of a talk show. Uh, you guys know that uh, I, I'm a Joe, Joe Rogan wannabe, but... Um, Let's go ahead and just like a talk show, let's uh, welcome Moha into the stage. <laughs> uh, here's Moha and uh, without further ado, uh, let's, let's get uh, right into it. So guys, we are here with the man, the myth, the legend, Moha. Uh, it was quite the, the job to get this um, sorted and arranged, but luckily he lives in Madrid as well. So, uh, you know, thought that uh, instead of having it over Zoom, uh, we'd link up and uh, actually connect. Touch up on, on how he's doing with his agency. Um, he's been crushing it, uh, especially at his uh, young age, because you're, what, 18, right? 18 as of today, actually. Oh, sh Yeah, 18 as of today. Happy birthday, Thank man. Thank you. Didn't know that, uh, but that's, that's dope. Uh, so on his birthday, uh, doing a, uh, a little interview, a little podcast uh, clip. Um, and yeah, I just want to dig into uh, his journey, because he recently graduated. Yeah. Um, so how, how are you feeling? Are you? Well, it feels pretty good. Now I yeah. have much more time to actually work rather than having to balance school and, and work life and meetings and all that stuff. But it feels really good, really relaxing to get at least one thing off my chest, especially now I can really focus much more, especially with summer and with mm. this extra time, it's, it's much more appealing, you could say. Because mm. how did you, like, how do you balance the whole thing, right? Because uh, I had Kasim on, I'm not sure if you watched that interview. A lot of people found value from like the way he managed um, school, and and uh, and uh, his agency, right? Because a lot a lot of people, like most of my mentees, like most people, are looking to start their agency. They're balancing something else, right? So mm. how how did that balance work for you? I know you're crushing it with your studies, with the agency. So how did you manage to balance all that stuff? Well, honestly, I had a pretty crazy schedule. Mm. To be honest, I I would probably like <laughs> normally my my day to day schedule when I was uh, fully 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 driven uh, was. I'd go to sleep at 12, wake up at 4 a.m., okay. uh, take half an hour for myself, and then work out a little, and then start on agency work okay. until 8. 8, go to school. Uh, sometimes if I have a meeting uh, from 9 to 5, I, you know, the school's pretty uh, relaxed knowing that uh, <laughs> I make what I make and, and that okay. I'm working, and they're really into that stuff. So okay, cool. Cool, sometimes cool. they let me have meetings in school, so that really mm. sorts it out. Or okay. after school as well. After school, I have designated hours for schoolwork and okay. then designated hours for, for, for you know, the agency work. But okay. what really helped is that it was very automated, which honestly came from mostly from the mentorship, which, mm. which made it much, much easier to, to manage. If it were not automated, for example, sending the emails and all that mm. stuff, it would have been much, much more difficult, yeah. to be honest. But... It, it, it's a good grind. Yeah. It's a good grind. <laughs> yeah. Funny enough, that those uh, a lot of those automated systems that I, that we cover in the mentorship, like they came from me being stuck in uni, being stuck in class, and I'm like, dude, I cannot fucking send emails. <laughs> yeah. Like, how am I supposed to send clients? So I was like, there must be a better way than just like banging out hundreds of like cold emails, uh, you know, uh, and being at it on yeah. your, your desk. Um, that's really dope, though. Like, did you did you have the conversation with with the school, or did it just come up like naturally? Uh, naturally? No, uh, so at the beginning of the year, I had a couple of meetings and uh, you probably can know that I get along with pretty much mm. everybody. Mm. So uh, Most people, I mean, I think someone made a reference because I was watching, um, <laughs> I was, you know, I, basically I watched, uh, he had a speech uh, at his graduation, so checked it out. Uh, and there was one of his friends actually made a mention to, yeah, to well, your agency, yeah, yeah. right? So like most people are aware that yeah, you're in yeah. the agency. 
Okay. And so uh, I get a, a, along really well with the headmaster. We always talk about, for example, books that we really mm. like or, or just stuff in general we really like. So he asked me, what did you do during quarantine? And I explained yeah. to him uh, that I started an agency and all that good stuff. Mm. And he's like, oh, really? Wow, how do you balance it? And I was like, well, here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then he lets me use his office uh, when I have, for example, which is really really cool. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah, which is really really sweet of him. Honestly, uh, have clients ever been like, "Yo, I think that's like a, I don't know, like a high school degree. Like, uh, are you <laughs> yeah. in a principal's office? Yeah, like, yeah. Are you grounded? Yeah, I've, had, I've had people like, it's a really nice office. I'm like, thank you, <laughs> thank <laughs> nice, you. Nice. And uh, but I've also had bad experiences with some uh, some well uh, meetings, not clients per se, but uh, for example, you know, uh, discovery calls. Yeah. It, they'll be like, oh, you're 17 years old. What do you know about this? Mm. The minute I hear that, I turn it off. I'm like, well, I don't have time for you. Right. How do you react to that? Because, uh, you know, the, I mean, right now you're 18, right? Yeah. So uh, when you when you have success, because right now, how much are you making? But, right now, I've, the the top, top, because with IB exams and everything, right mm. now I'm making 5,000 passive. Okay. Without, without having but you to got to like 12K month. per month, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I could so three or four months, 12K. You got to, tw- I mean, and, and that's fa- 5K because he was doing IV, like all this shit, like that, that's, you know, <laughs> pa- passive, like completely passive, like that's, that's, that's pretty, yeah. pretty insane at your age, especially. Thank um, you. 12K a month, right? Yeah. So you got to that figure, uh, 17. Yeah. How, how, you know, if, if that conversation ever came up, right, that objection ever came up, like what was your response to, uh, to it? Did it come up a lot? Or because I feel like it doesn't come up as much as people think. They're like, oh, you know, people are gonna pick up my age. Like, dude, no, it really you doesn't. Show the no, it really doesn't. You have and no actually, shit. the thing is, like, when you get into the meetings with these guys, they're like, all we want is results. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. we don't care about your age. Like, I can have a ten-year-old do it, and and if he can do it, that's all I want. I want yeah, the results. Yeah. But then you always find, you know, a bit more conservative about work style, and to be like, well, yeah. what do you know? You're seventeen mm-hmm. years old. And my my approach to that is, I know what I'm capable of. My, my referrals show what I'm capable of. Mm. The things I've worked on in the past show what I'm capable of. If right. someone doesn't believe in me, I'm not wasting my time with, with them. Okay. They can find somebody else to do it for them, even though I know I can do the job 10 times better. Okay. Okay. So they lose, I don't. Right, right. No, I, I like that. I like that. Um, cool. So going back to the schedule, right? Uh, so you said, I mean, you woke up really early. Right? Yeah. You had the 30 minute, like what you did. Yeah. Like, morning routine or something like Morning that. routine, okay, yeah. Cool. Um, then you went to school. Then after school, like what, what were the, I mean, what, what, what did it look like? Um, after school, I, well, I do sports too. So yeah, okay. it's a packed schedule. Yeah. I, I have an hour where I just relax and then I have sports for an hour and a half, get mm-hmm. home, uh, do most of my school work. Mm-hmm. And then I leave two hours uh, to check up on uh, how everything's going, see see how the ads managers are going, okay. uh, speak. What what really helped as well is the difference in time zones with my employees yeah. and team members. So because what what does the team look like right now? Uh, the team well now it's three people. Okay, sure. Me and and three people, and D- what like uh, media buyers like what? Yeah, okay. so we have media buyer, uh, ad copier, okay. and uh, then uh, a CT like a CTO. Okay, cool. And so uh, what helped is the difference in time zones because when it's really late for me, it's early for mm, them. Mm. So it was perfect for me, especially yeah. since I kind of work really yeah. late and really, really early. So mm. it worked, uh, it meshed really well. So yeah. that's what helped as well. But uh, I'd leave because my parents, my parents, uh, they're pretty traditional. They told me you can have the company and, and uh, the agency and you can work mm. as much as you want. But if we see that your school grades are declining, you're not so i had to keep those grades up and then grind it a lot but it was worth it it was worth it learned a lot and i think i can easily say that the work experience i've gained from this year is better than what i would gain in an internship somewhere you know somewhere here in madrid or somewhere Mm. yeah i mean a lot of it's like that transformational journey you know that 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 one goes through when you're scaling business like one, one of the things i say is like entrepreneurship is by far the best like personal development thing you could ever do personally. yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. as I, and, and the best example for this is as a kid i was i was very disciplined i was very focused very driven but then came a point where you know it, between 10th grade 11th grade things went downhill because i didn't really have anything to look forward to to do i felt like everything right. was more of a task to do okay. but then when i started stumbling upon what you did which is 
by the way, a really random story because I didn't even know it was him at the beginning. <laughs> and this was and this was December, like what, twenty seventh or twenty eighth yeah. at four a.m. And I was like, wait, what? This is Jaime Herrera. Yeah, because guys, and, I mean, <laughs> he he knew me. But we we used to go to the same school, right? Uh, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, so he knew me from from childhood. And yeah, you saw me on TikTok. Yeah, I saw him on TikTok. You're like, like, what? <laughs> What's this all about? Yeah. And then I kept on following him. I was like, and, and, and I liked your stuff even before like I, I did like saw the resemblance, you know? Mm. I was like, man, he's, he's speaking facts. This is a great yeah. business to tap into. And then with quarantine, it was either work or waste my time. Mm. So I decided to work. Because yeah. what better way to work when I have 24 hours free for myself yeah. Yeah. to work? And it was the best time to tap into uh, SMMA. Every, everything is going digital now. Yeah, yeah. Especially with it, it changed everything tremendously. And it really taught me discipline, especially in school. It also, yeah. and my day to day life, uh, I, you know, best examples, I started waking up at 4 a.m. And I still do. I take cold showers, like, like freezing cold showers mm. to wake me up, stuff like that. I wouldn't have started doing without that discipline and that drive uh, to better myself and and to achieve what I know I can achieve. Well, what is it? Because um, th- th- that's that's like the external self-improvement, right? Yeah. Uh, what are some of the effects that you've seen internally? Like, for example, whether it be your communication skills or like some of the things that build an e-com agency, some of the transferable skills that you can take. And obviously you're still going to do this, right? And we can talk about this. Well, I'm not, I'm not even sure, right? But we can talk about that later on. Uh, but what are some of the transferable skills that it's given you that has made you just have a much better and, and, and more optimized uh, well person. well probably communication skills yeah because you can tell by now that i'm, I'm really confident in myself yeah man, no, I, I, that, that's what i'm asking though because yeah. like i see a massive transformation and that's what pumps me up as well you know because hmm. like i know you're getting the results um but but seeing someone like level up like that's that's what that's, cool, right yeah, because that's... then then it's not just about the money right that you've got in the background yeah. it's like now you can take this and then like be successful with so much more with shit. something else yeah. exactly and yeah, especially with communication, uh, the way I can communicate with others, the way I can work with others, the way I can pitch ideas to other mm. people, that, that improved immensely. Because uh, first of all, you know, with an agency, and you probably have you know, the same feeling, once you achieve something, you know you can achieve more. Mm. And, and you have the confidence that you know, you're like, oh, shit, I can do this. Yeah. Like, I, I can reach this. So the way I can communicate that, especially with, uh, you know, with with my team members or I can communicate that with potential clients mm-hmm. has improved so much and can help me in the future for anything I can yeah. I can uh, you know <laughs> pitch pitch any idea yeah, yeah, I yeah. want you know for sure. especially for example if I have any type of other venture where let's say mm-hmm. I need investors or stuff like that it's, it's perfect yeah. Yeah. and I still have a lot to grow obviously because you know it's mm-hmm. only been a year but uh, I've in, in this past year I've, I feel like I've grown a lot and, and I really, really, really appreciate it, honestly. So, mm-hmm. so it's nice. Yeah, I think like there's something. I think there's something that happens when you start getting those little wins under your belt, right? Because like at first it's like, I mean, the, your self identity is like I'm not a person that has had success, right? Like obviously maybe in your mm-hmm. certain areas, right? Maybe at school, whatever, right? But like, am I an entrepreneur? Like, am I, am I a business person, right? But as you start getting these little wins. It gives you so much confidence, and that's why mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people underestimate the 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 power of getting those little wins, right? Because once you fi- sign that first client, like now you have like a whole new level of confidence to go out and sign more clients, and more stuff, yeah, and, no. and build all the sh- and all that stuff. It's nuts, nuts, nuts. Yeah, like the and and you know, as cliche as it sounds, as everybody says, you know, don't give up. Like it, it even if like you start like this, don't give up. Mm. But the thing is, do not give up. Yeah, because yeah. when you least expect it you'll get the results. And once you get the results, it all goes uphill. Yeah. It all yeah. goes uphill because it's, it's like an adrenaline rush to get you. And each time, it feels like the first time. Each mm-hmm. time you sign the client or each time you achieve something, it feels like it's the first time you achieve something. Yeah. And those little wins are what keep you motivated and what keep you going. And, and it, it really opens your mind to, to you know, the idea of, of really not giving up and, and, and knowing especially, for example, you know, with, with your agency, how now you've grown it much more than just an e-commerce agency, mm-hmm. but to, to so many other different, yeah. you know, and, and uh, a, a brand now. It's not only a, a marketing agency, but also a brand, which is crazy. And, and you know, that's, for example, uh, what I mean by like these little wins can help you like find yourself and, and find what you can 
really achieve. So those little wins mm. really help in the future. And and yeah. the best advice is yeah, never don't give up. As cliche as it sounds, and yeah, it's, no, yeah. you know, it's powerful it's the word, truth. Man. Powerful words, um, because yeah, it's it's. I mean, people people think that it's it's the version that they are when they start their agency that is gonna get them to 10k a month, right? But it's it, it's completely different. Like you're you're gonna be a completely different person when you've hit 12k a month or when you're making 5k passively. Like it's just a completely different uh, yeah. version. And and the per, the version of you that will grow to new heights, right? It will be a completely different version of of Mohab, right? Yeah. Um, on the you know as, as you, when you start getting these little wins, right? And when you start making your first money and all that stuff. Um, and when you started seeing the the money in the bank account and all that stuff, did it have a, an effect on you? The, that specifically, what what it really had an effect on, and I mean, uh, what one thing that I knew from the beginning is, uh, you know, I, I come from a family that uh, does very well, and, and one of the reasons why I really started the agency and, and love entrepreneurship is because people always, you know, would say, oh, what you get is mm. from your parents, mm. and that's one thing that's one thing that drives me insane yeah, because yeah. I do work hard for, mm. for what I get and, and I've, I've done it with my agency. But the first thing that went mm. through my mind when I saw that money in like, uh, in the bank was invested. That's yeah. I, I, other streams of income. That's, that's the first thing that came into my mind. And also what changed was that I, I was like, I, I probably want to work now so I can enjoy later. Yeah. And, and that was a very difficult, especially at my age. 17 years old you know you always want to go out and have fun mm -hmm. but there's some times where you yeah. really need to focus and and that's what yeah. really changed in my mind when i saw the money that's a that's a big realization right the fact that like let let me work now that i've got like all the energy in the world that i've got the drive right uh and, and it might even be hard like i'm sure for for a lot of like your friends right yeah because uh, yeah. I, I i mean i've had my school experience as well i mean i'm sure most people <laughs> have right uh but like it's it's really hard for them to grasp and it's really hard for us to grasp even as well as when we're starting out the journey that like it pays so many dividends, right? To, to yeah. work now. Yeah, no, it does, it does, it does. And and one thing, and this is also <laughs> one of your TikToks that I watched in the yeah. early days is invest. I mean, especially for my case uh, right now, uh, I, I don't really need all that money. What I do is invest it, other streams of income, you know, indexes, mm -hmm. Uh, cryptocurrency is only I uh, haven't only you know one yeah. in in one coin and, and not coin it's it's a whole digital platform Ethereum Eight, which okay. I invested in when it was at eight hundred euros okay, cool. and I still have my money in it so you know investing in, in different streams of income so for example yeah. if anything happens in the future I'll ra I'll, I'll always have something that I can start another you know venture with not not stay just stuck on one thing because you never know when you know market gets saturated or or when when something is is not going to be used mm -hmm. anymore like take for sim the simplest example is uh, you know with uh, with day-to-day uh, -day marketing and you know social media marketing has uh, has blown yeah. that yeah. <laughs> out of the park exactly so yeah different streams of income and, and always you know trying to to find other ways of uh, bettering myself and, and my agency mm -hmm. and, and trying to make it something bigger. Yeah, yeah. Going back to one of the things you said, right? Um, one of the things that, that I, you know, I really respect from, respect from, from, from you and, and what you've uh, accomplished is the fact that you come from a pretty comfortable background, right? Yeah. And, and oftentimes I say like that, that is often harder than the people that have nothing, right? Because they have like, they have to have, you know, it, it's easier to have a fire under your ass when you have like nothing and you're just like, I, I want to get it. I, yeah. Like I, I want to, I, I, I want money, right? Because I've never had it. Um, so how much, you know, what, because you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, one of the drives was to, to like prove that you could build your own shit, right? Now that you've done that in a way, right? Obviously mm. there's still a lot more to, to achieve, but has the, the drive or the things that fuel you changed from that kind of like negative energy and fuel, which by the way is like super, uh, useful at first, right? Has that changed now? Or like, are you operating from a different frequency now? Uh, I mean, in some aspects, yes. Some aspects, no. Uh, obviously, there's other driving forces. You know, it, it's before it was to prove other people wrong, but now it's to prove myself wrong. It's it's to show myself that I can mm. be better and better and better, and to prove that <laughs> there there's always space for improvement. But there's also always in the back of my head the tip where it's like, 
you know, always mm-hmm. knowing someone's like, oh, your parents got this for you. Oh, mm-hmm. your parents did this for you. And there is nothing in the world that makes me as mad as, as, as someone saying that. Yeah. Especially because, you know, obviously it's, you know, a common myth that, oh, if, if uh, you come from an affluent background, your parents do everything for you. Yeah, yeah. And that's a stereotype I want to break. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's one of, uh, one of the reasons why I started... Uh, I started the agency, but obviously the it, it has changed to more a, a bit more positive. You could say a bit more, no, but a much more positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the aspect where I want to improve myself, like it's not about what others think now; it's about what I think yeah, yeah. and and what I think I can do. Yeah. So that's what's changed. I, I think that's mostly. a really powerful reflection, and 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 it goes for for the viewers as well. Like I think it's completely fine at at the start to operate from maybe not like not not the healthiest <laughs> of, of frequencies, right? Like to just yeah. use that negative energy and, and use it to fuel you. To accomplish to get you know to get you off your ass right and, and, and achieve and accomplish those things but i think as you start scaling it becomes more about like the person you're becoming in the journey like constant you know you know wh- where can you get to next and what is the type of person that you need to become to get to that next yeah. um swifting you know sw- switching gears a, a bit right and talking about those relationships that uh, you mentioned some which uh, are not so positive which you know they, they basically tell you like oh you know you haven't done this yourself but more on, on the friend side of things right did and this is a bit of a juicy topic, right? Mm-hmm. But did, did, did it change how people viewed you when you started seeing the money, when you started having success or the OGs, like it was just like the same type of thing? Honestly, not at all. I, I, but I think that also plays a role because, you know, the American school, how it is, no mm-hmm. one is really there to, to make friendships for, you know, for the money or for the, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, but uh, honestly, all of them have been very, very supportive. It's yeah. crazy. All of them have very been very very nice about it, and and uh, you know they haven't changed one bit, mm. not one bit at all. All of them, uh, OGs, mm. and and the OGs have stayed OGs, and the m- nice. more friends have actually wanted to learn more and and how they can do the same yeah. thing, which is very very powerful, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So honestly, no, they, they they've been very very yeah. positive, and that's what really helped as well to see some of the feedback from others. Yeah. But yeah, no, they kept it. They kept it really civil. You could say. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, dude, I, I love to hear that, man. Because one of the things, one of the things that drives me personally is like, if I can impact others, and this will happen to you as well, because you, you have really good communication skills and the ability to impact others. When you can impact others, like for, for example, the, the reason why I do mentorship, one of the reasons, right, is like if I impact you, you can have that ripple effect where like people say, oh, shit, like, I'm here at school. My parents are, you know, society tell me that I need to like take the next step and you know live a. Hmm. The, the typical life, right? But yeah. I, I, I see Moha like getting results with this, like he's thinking different. So I think like that's that's so powerful, right? The, the fact that you can have a ripple effect on the people around you. It doesn't have to be hundreds of thousands of followers on, on social media, but like yeah. some, some, you know, some of the most powerful uh, relationships you can have is, is the ones, you know, the, the ones you make by people like telling you like, hey, I really, I really enjoy uh, no, 100%. I really respect what you're doing. 100%. And, and I, 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 with that topic, I have a friend who uh, actually tomorrow, funny enough, uh, he's asked me to help him a little bit because he wants to start uh, okay. with uh, with uh, e-commerce and all that. So it's like it's 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 really fascinating, honestly, because yeah, yeah. uh, it, it has it, it, it's like a, a web effect. You know, it starts from one person, goes to another, other, and then just keeps on spreading and spreading, mm-hmm. spreading exponentially, which is really really interesting. Yeah, sure, sure. So that's that's really cool, honestly. Yeah, one hundred percent. Going going forward, right? Um, your plan, obviously, because uh, well, p- part of it, because your parents uh, yeah. obviously have that, uh, you know, want you to do so. But uh, you're going down the the um, the university route, right? Yeah. So, how are you seeing? How are you looking at the agency now that you're uh, going towards that route? Like, are you? Do you think you're gonna be able to even balance it better? Uh, like, how are you looking at at the role that the agency is gonna play? Well. What I'm going to be studying in, in university is law, something very broad. And I want to focus on law for, for the next four years. And uh, like I said, I've, I've put my money in, in indexes, uh, mm-hmm. almost all of it. And I'm going to wait until September and then put the rest of the money in indexes. And for mm-hmm. the next four years, uh, focus on law so that I have a bigger uh, project in my mind that okay. I want to start. So yeah. uh, I want to get the law side of things going and then I'm gonna embark in that project, okay, okay. and uh, that's that's what I wanna focus on. Grow, not the agency, but grow myself mm-hmm. into into doing something much bigger that has a bigger impact, mm-hmm. not only on companies but on people. Yeah. 
and that's what I want to. And, and, and I've started thinking about this project already. Okay, okay. And so, <laughs> four years in, four yeah. years in. <laughs> no, that, that, that's really cool to hear, man, because uh, one of the things that I feel like, you know, if, if you guys have watched uh, any of the previous interviews, like, uh, not everyone wants like, to have the same path, right? And that, that's one of the things that, that I really like about this model is that you can either use it as a stepping stone towards, you know, to, to do other stuff. You can, all, you, you can scale it up to like 100K a month. Mm. You can build out, you know, your own e-com brands and do all this stuff, right? Um, so that's one of the things that, that I think is incredible about this business model that it doesn't tie you down or it doesn't like, you know, make you do certain things that you don't want to do. It's, it's very transferable. Yeah, no, it, it really is. It really is. And it opens a lot of doors, like I said before. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, honestly, a year ago, I, I wouldn't, uh, well, not a year, a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. I couldn't really sit down and tell you that because this, the, the project that I'm thinking of doing in the next four years is, uh, has, has a much bigger humanitarian impact. Okay. And uh, if you ask me a year and a half ago, I tell you impossible. Uh-huh. So it, it really does open doors. So yeah. I'm I'm really glad. That's I'm really glad. Was there a specific low point, uh, personally, right? Like maybe you woke up one day and you're like, "How am I?" Because I mean, you got success pretty pretty quick, right? Yeah, um, but, yeah. But but was I'm, I'm sure there was like some point or maybe like a a few instances where you were like, "Is this ever gonna work? Is this like?" Am I cut off for this? Or maybe not. Yeah. Were, were, were no, there, there has been. No, there has been. A hundred percent. In the first two months, uh, you know, it's, it's it was just a little... Especially when... Because people think, you know, it's... Uh, oh, you get a discovery call, oh, directly a client. Yeah. It doesn't really work like that, obviously. Yeah. But... And, and, you know, as, as funny enough, as, again, 4 a.m. Half my stories are, are really at 4 a.m. Is You know, I was like, will this ever work? Will, will I ever really succeed in this and and that that low point got me to work even mm-hmm. harder because you know i saw everybody else could do it and why can't i and so that that was a that, that was one of my low points where i was like yeah I was like can i really do this can i you know yeah. would can i just jump into the deep end like it was like throwing me into the deep end mm-hmm. so that was that was a low point but for most of it no i'm 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 honestly a pretty positive person when yeah. it comes to pretty optimistic, you could say, uh, optimistic, obviously, logically, not emotionally. So, mm-hmm. but uh, pretty optimistic. So, th- yeah. not that many low points. Everything was was done, either logically and 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 with, you know, proven facts or or not done at all. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that that I think helped really mm-hmm. with uh, keeping me focused and keeping me driven. But there's always you know the low points. Yeah. Here and, and there. I think like uh, that that mindset helped me tremendously as well, right? The fact that like if other people can, why can I not? Right? Yeah. And obviously, you could just, yeah, you, you have to have a certain level of like self confidence or whatever you want to call it, yeah. right? To, to say like, okay, if these guys are doing it, like they're not better or you know more smarter than me, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in terms of uh, you know, and, and to wrap it up, right? In terms of the sacrifices, because I know you've you've made your your fair share of, of, hmm. of sacrifices. We're talking about it even uh, uh, just now. Uh, be, before the, the the interview, what are some like the 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 sacrifices that the, the sacrifices that you've had to make um, over the maybe the past year to get to the point at which you're you're currently at? I mean, probably changing a bit the lifestyle I had, especially with the fact that I've kind of focused much more on bettering myself rather than really. And I know obviously some people would disagree with this and and trust me i a year ago i would i would have disagreed Mm. with it too but you know not always going out not always you know going partying really focusing on school uh when or focusing on school or focusing on anything honestly but Mm. not really going out and partying that much really focusing on myself and and trying to better myself because honestly and trust me when i say this and, and you probably have felt the same way but people as much as people seem like they support you, they don't. Because mm. no one wants to see somebody else succeed without them succeeding mm. as well. So whoever, you know, they might say, oh, we just want you to have fun. We just want you to go out. Mm. But really, are you having fun when in 10 years you say, you could think yeah. to yourself, I could have done this better if I didn't go out and I didn't do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that that's biggest sacrifice, in my yeah. opinion. And, and and you realize, like, for me, because um, it's hard to say no, right? Uh, yeah, no, it is. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's hard to say no, but then you realize, like, number one, maybe I'm completely wrong, right? But from my personal experience, like, when you actually go out to some of these parties, right? Like, you see people that are 
like sure they're having fun but like it's kind of like if they go out too much it's it's commonplace for them right so it's kind of like they're just there because like that's their self-identity like they go out a lot right um but then as you said like i think a lot of times it's like they try to get you to go out because they would feel bad if they see you like staying in and yeah on yourself and, and doing all this stuff right yeah yeah and obviously they're not gonna say it and uh in a very unconscious way i think yeah yeah you know, yeah like, unconscious I, don't think way. You know, so, so I think most people are not like trying to harm or anything like that it's no just but a very it's, unconscious way. yeah no it is it's it's much more it's not really it's it's yeah like you said it's unconscious it's not really meant mm. to stop you but it's you you know you know what i mean like yeah. in in the sense where it's like oh you know he's working i'm out here partying you mm. know <laughs> getting wasted all the all that stuff all the you know mm. And uh, to, to go back to one thing you said about a, a common place, it's it's really interesting because you know I I don't really usually uh, go out to parties a lot, but you know graduation like we mentioned before, cool. uh, I went to the, um, the graduation party and and I'm I'm telling you that I genuinely don't know how they can keep up that lifestyle yeah. every week and I <laughs> don't yeah. know how they can keep yeah. up that lifestyle. It's crazy, <laughs> but but hey, I mean. Have, having a little and, and don't, don't get me wrong and, and probably Jaime agrees it, that doesn't mean don't have fun at all but it means know when to have fun and know when to work mm. also dude another thing that uh, and, and I'm hoping that people who are in school are I mean a bunch of people who are in school are watching this because another thing is like have fun but I feel like in, in, in school it's it's, also, it's almost like you think it's the norm to constantly be going out right and so mm. like is, is this is this constant, like, is this idea that you download in your head yeah. where like, oh, I have to be going out, right? Otherwise, like, something's wrong, you know? And so have the, have the time to, to really reflect and, and, and ask like, am I truly happy going out? Or am I just doing this? Because everyone seems to be doing this, right? Because for me, I, like, of course, I, I enjoy a, a party every once in a while, yeah. right? Like, I enjoy going out, like, I enjoy living life. Like, I mean, who doesn't, Who doesn't, right? yeah. But, but then, uh, you know, I, I started questioning, like, why am I going out to this party, right? Or like, why? why is this the the type of like life the the student lifestyle right Hmm. like why not you know why not work now or why not like build cool oh obviously have fun right but like question question the 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 social norms right exactly i feel like a lot of people are you know i i I see this all the time like i feel like a lot of people get caught up in you know whether it's college or 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 school going to parties or going out and, and like partying when they actually don't like it at all, right? They're just there for the so, social pressure, right? Pressure. And like the, the, the really smart people or like, I mean, you, have, you even have to be that smart, right? Or intelligent to build cool shit. But that could be like, I don't know, being doing more productive stuff. Yeah, and again, it's not all about productivity, but it's just like question things, you know? No, no, I think no, it's 100%. No, it's mm. like, it, it's because it, obviously it's the social norm. You're, you're a teenager, I'll have fun, I'll be rebellious. Mm-hmm. And I think that that goes with a very important message too. And I, and I brought this up in, in my speech, in my graduation speech. People think that people tell you things like, for example, your parents, like tell you, oh, don't mm-hmm. go out, don't do this to harm you. But it really isn't. It's, it's, yeah. it's in order to help you. So when you tell yourself that, oh, today don't go out or, or, today work it isn't because you don't want to have fun it's because you want to better yourself so you can have fun when you're 30 yeah, and yeah. and and you've achieved most of what you want to achieve at a young age yeah. you know what i mean so i mean i yeah no i 100 percent agree it's it's the, so, the social pressure is crazy and and knowing how to get out of it and knowing that societal norms aren't always re, aren't always the ones that are you're not gonna get you through life. That's the turning point, I think, yeah. in, in someone's life. Knowing when to drift from, 100%. from uh, you know, from from society's uh, expectations to your expectations. It gives you a whole, you know, people talk about freedom, like financial freedom, time freedom, yeah. freedom location freedom, but freedom of thought, like freedom of like doing the shit you actually want, not because people tell you. Tell you, you to know? do it. Like yeah, that, no, that's yeah. when you, like when you don't give a shit. You know, yeah, like when you don't give a shit about like what people think of what you're doing, what you're working on, uh, the way you dress, uh, you know, your choices, like that's when you really win, right? Cause like once, once you have that freedom and you start tapping into like your, your conscience and, and like your creativity and all this stuff that you actually want to do, like that's when you really crack it, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, I, it's, it, I, you know, it sounds like, yeah, freedom of thought, freedom of speech, all that stuff, but are, are we really, in this day and age, are we really free to, mm. to express what we really think or are we just thinking what 
people want us to mm-hmm. think. So it is, in my opinion, it's the most important one. It's much more, in my opinion, much more important than because without freedom of thought, I don't think you can get the other freedom, freedom of time or freedom, yeah. financial freedom and, and, you know, and uh, freedom of location without freedom of thought. Because you can't, because in order to have the financial freedom, you need to break away from the bubble that everybody's in. You need to be different in order to to yeah, yeah. to be uh, to stand out. So I think freedom of thought is what really gets you there. Dude, I think there's a. I mean, I really like the the way uh, we you know that that conversation. Um, definitely, are very valuable, uh, and I uh, I've enjoyed every uh, single second of it. Uh, is there any final message, final uh, comment, final word that you want to leave the audience? Uh, the final word is uh, honestly, the mentorship changed changed my life. That's that's all I have to say. And uh, and obviously, don't take it for the fact that oh, if you do it, you need to work hard, mm-hmm. work hard, and, and put the work in, and you'll see the results. Because yeah. it's handed on a silver platter. What what he gives you is literally a silver platter. So work hard and and. You can you can achieve anything. Honestly, I'm seven, eight, 18 years old now, and here I am. <laughs> wish wish the guy a happy birthday. If, <laughs> birthday, if you're watching <laughs> this, you, I'm sure you took value out of it. Leave the leave a, leave a comment. But, uh, dude, I want to acknowledge you, man, um, and uh, you know for, for thinking different, from being different, uh, for you know going, uh, you know, and traveling the path that it's an hour path uh, that most uh, most people at your age, especially, um, and even at 50, like they, they'll never uh, have the guts mm. or, or the cars to, to travel. So. I'm excited for uh, for what's to come, man. I'm excited for uh, the thing you're working on for um, for these four years, uh, and I wish you all the best, man. Uh, thank so you, sir. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. And, thank uh, you very much. We can, uh, we can connect uh, further. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. If you uh, if you've enjoyed the interview, go ahead and smash the like button and uh, drop a sub. <laughs> Hit the <little laughs> bell, bell icon so you never miss an update. And uh, we'll see you guys in, in the next one. So I really hope you enjoyed that. We covered a lot of topics, a lot of very juicy topics, and uh, hopefully you can walk away with a lot of golden nuggets. Now, real quick, this is not for everyone, but if you have the work ethic, you're looking to build an online business that can add real value to real people, right? And that can sustain you for five, 10, 15 years, an actual business, right? And you're looking to uh, blow past the 10K month mark in record-breaking time, then you might want to consider checking out my mentorship. I keep it very tight knit. So the first thing that we do is we jump on a call, see if you're a good fit. And uh, if you are, then uh, we'll discuss further details. But if you're looking to get results like Moha and countless other uh, mentees of mine, you can go ahead and check out the link in the description that is linked to apply to the mentorship. Go ahead and book in a time that works for you. You can go ahead and book in a time that best suits you. And my team and I will have a quick chat with you. So with that being said, hope everything's going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Moha, and then you walk in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And sounds I'm good. Grateful, like, claps, like, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Post, post production. <laughs> Watch me drink. <laughs> <laughs>